one so I wanted to go over how different fabrics pleat up in this video and I pleated up so many different combinations of fabrics for this video. I don't think I've ever done I've like prepared so much for a video as I have prepared with this video and spent so much like behind the scenes times. So I have a whole file that y'all can download in the link down in the description box. But I wanted to go over this file. I'm not going to go over everything because that would just be like a really long boring video I feel like. But I want to go over some things. So I'm, for starters I want to go over the pleating ratio. If you are brand new to smocking pleating, whatever. The pleating ratio, so for example, a very easy way to do this is take up 10 inches of a given fabric, because 10 inches is easy math. So um, I'm doing 10 inches of Imperial Batiste, and a side note, I love this fabric, especially for beginners. It's wonderfully priced, it's a wonderful quality, it pleats beautifully, it's easy to pleat, so it's just like the best thing for beginners. And and, and I still use it, um, even though no, I know how to pleat and everything like that. It's just, it's just lovely. Anywho, so I'm taking 10 inches of it, and then what you can do from there, since it's 10 inches, you're just moving the decimal place over. So you scrunch it up until, like, you can knot one end. You can scrunch up those pleats until you like how they look, and you see what it measures. You know, 2 inches, which is maybe like a 1 to 2 ratio or whatever, um is going to be on the more tighter side. That'll be something that's geared towards like picture picture smocking. I mean if you like the look of tighter pleats and you want to do geometric smocking on them, by all means go for it because it is sewing, so you do you. I personally I like to stick with ge geometric smocking. I do very <laughs> very very little of picture smocking. Not that I don't like it, it's just not my cup of tea really. Um, but for geometric smocking, I personally think that the pleats should be a little bit spaced out, you know. Um, so like two and a half are a little bit more spaced out. And even up to about three, like I kind of like it a little bit on the, on the, I don't know, more spaced out side. And I'm, I learned a lot doing this little file and it, it seems like, for me at least, uh, the finer the fabric, the more I like them spaced out. I just like, you know, because you can kind of see the delicateness of that fabric and you can see this, the airiness and, and when the pleats, not that it's bad, but when the pleats are smushed together, you can't see that airiness as bad. It's, it's still beautiful. And it's completely your preference. So I just want to make that kind of like little disclaimer about the pleating ratios that I have in here. These are to my preference and so my, and I, and I also don't, don't really do picture smocking. So my preference may not be the same as your preference and that is perfectly fine. But I have this in here to try to give you some sort of ratio or some sort of idea, some sort of ratio. Um, the, uh, the way you can use this number is that if you have a given piece of fabric already in your stash and you're wondering what you can do with it, say it's, you know, 42 inches wide or something like that, you take this pleating ratio and divide it into that 42. Now you're going to have to account for any sort of facings or, you know, underarm curves or anything like that, but if you just straight up divide it, that would be from one edge to the other edge of the fabric, how much, um, how long it will be after it's pleated using my ratio, if you, if you agree with how the, the pleats should look with me. Um, now, if you are looking to buy fabric and you're like, huh, I need a finished length of, you know, around, of, over the bodice of, say, I don't know, 15 inches or something, you can take this number, this pleating ratio, multiply it by the 15, again, account for whatever arm cycles you might have, or, or um, arm side, I think they call it arm side whatever. Um, count for all that stuff, count for any facings or plackets, um, and you can multiply the pleating ratio, add in those things afterwards, and that's the length you need to order. Um, or at least that's the width of your fabric, whatever you get what I'm saying. So then I also have the ease of pleating, and I kind of have this into four categories, I believe. Um, so I have things like, it just went through like butter, and it's just it's lovely, absolutely like made for pleating, went through like butter. I have good, which is basically um, basically all the fat, uh, or not all the fabrics, the majority of fabrics fell under good, I feel like. Um, I didn't actually count them, but I think the majority of them are good. And this is, it goes through with just the slightest bit of resistance, but 
it's all good, you know. Um, then I've got OK, which it went through. It did not break any needles, um, but it was not so pleasant. It was a bit of resistance and not so much fun. And then I have, I think only one fabric went into this where I said just no. And that was the knit that was interfaced. It was just a no. For me, at least personally, I want nothing to do with it. Um, it was not no joy for me. So, um, so there's that. And then I've got the pleating shape. So the pleating shape, um, I think most people like a pleating shape of a U. So basically what happens with these things is as you go from very fine fabrics to thicker, fuller fabrics is from the very fine you get a V. Um, depending on the weave and like the fiber and everything, you can have a V that is structurally sound still, so like the walls of the V are still, you know, out. Or you can have a V that the walls have sort of collapsed in. And that's the case with um, Silk de Panone, is that the walls sort of collapse in, which is why it's good to interface the, that, that fabric. So I have, I have a V that the walls have been collapsed. I have a delicate V, that's the walls are still good, just very, it's a very fine, you know, V. Um, then you can have a V, which is a, you know, solid V shape, <laughs> and then that kind of as it gets thicker and more full, whatever, of a fiber, you can get to a slight U, and then you get to a, just a, a normal U shape. <laughs> then you can get to a um, super round you and that's where I stopped so I have that all on this sheet right here and then I have whether I feel the fabric needs interfacing and some of them I say no but then I say what the interfacing does so like if you know for example with Burmisama I said no it does not need interfacing then you know it's, it's a U it's a V shape without interfacing it's a solid V shape but if you add interfacing to it, it does plump them up nicely to that U shape. So it all depends on what you're going for and what your look is. Um, so, and of course you can do test pieces on your own if you want to, you know, dive into this and have a little bit of fun with pleating stuff up. I learned so much making this little file right here. Um, and then I also have a column for moray. Am I saying that right? You know, when it kind of like, it, um, when you have, so basically anytime you have like a check, a stripe, whether that's something that's been printed on the fabric, been weaved into the fabric, or the weave of the fabric causes it. So like things like corduroy will cause this because the weave of corduroy has a built-in stripe. So it has, whether it has moray to it, whether it's like very slight, you know, nothing, very slight. If it's terribly moraid, like gingham, I personally, I know it sounds not, but I personally think gingham should only be pleated by hand. I just, such a difference, pleating by hand um, versus sitting it through a pleater. Uh, and I do have a video on how to do that. And the last thing here that's on this, the last column, um, and this is a little bit not quite an exact science, but I've tried to put the skew on here because I didn't want to link everything since, like for example, Imperial Latisse has, you know, however many 30 options or whatever, how many colors, it's got a bunch of colors. Um, same thing with gingham and, 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 you know, piquet and Swiss muslin and whatever. So I didn't want to link it and just have that. So I tried to put the skew. So if you're on there and you're like, hmm, is this this? And, you know, obviously I don't work at a farmhouse, so I try to do this to the best of my ability. I do believe their their skew is some flavor of like what the what the fabric is and where it is in their shop. So I think like that some of the numbers refer to like what aisles or something like that. But I could be mistaken. I don't actually don't actually work there. <laughs> I would love to, but I don't. Um, so so it's trying to help you if you're online on, on their site and you're like, is this the fabric she was talking about? You can look at the SKU and see if it has some resemblance to it. Um, oh, here's a good example. So the Swiss muslin. The Swiss muslin has the air, like heirloom, because it's an heirloom quality fabric. Um, number two, which I think refers to the placement in their pla in their shop, but I'm not, sh I'm not really sure. Dash D, dash Swiss muslin. And then it has the insert color. So Swiss muslin comes in, I think it's like white and, and pink and yellow and, you know, aqua and 
whatever else. I think, is there a lilac? I don't know. But like the insert color. So, you know, your insert color is going to change on, but you can kind of see where I'm trying to go with that. Um, and some things it was easier just to be like, just go underneath this category. For example, oh, so for example, like velvet, like just go under the category velvet slash velveteens. Um, or is taffeta go under silk taffeta? So, or Italian Duchess silk satin, just just search Duchess silk satin and they all pop up. And there's a whole bunch of different skews. So there was no like pattern with the skews with the, with the Duchess silk satin. So that's the better route to do. So, at any rate, like I said, the file is down below if you want to download it. I hope this is helpful. Um, of course, you can do the 10 inch method and test them out yourself. Um, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate all for watching and I hope to catch you all next time.